<clears throat> Hello everyone, this is Pocket Size Bio. Today I want to talk about a, how to do the Western blot protocol. And um, when I was a graduate student, it was a little bit difficult for me to do a lot of the uh, procedures as a, a lot of it was self-learning. A lot of my experience in the, in the graduate uh, uh, degree in the master's and PhD degree uh, we had to learn things on our own and uh, sometimes this would be quite time-consuming because a lot of the protocols online and videos would tell you how to do a certain technique and and wouldn't tell you detailed um, step-by-step on how to perform a certain technique, right? Like Western uh, Western blot or in situ hybridization or dig probe um, uh, development, right? So uh, I made this video to help those that need a step-by-step -step, um, procedure, right? And how to do, how to set up your equipment and how to uh, perform this experiment even though you don't have all of the necessary uh, things that other videos t show you like uh, these formal tanks and whatnot right there's ways to do it and simple uh, containers and other material can be used uh, to give you the same results the the protocol that i'm doing here is the one um, that was used on several nature papers okay um, that had a, a high success rate right <clears throat> so the efficiency of this protocol is um is pretty well all right so depending on what your sample is some things might vary but nevertheless the essential things uh, should be there for every one of us to for to perform this experiment right so this this uh, western Bra protocol uh, is broken down into three parts and this first part for this video is creating um obtaining the protein lysate right you need your protein sample to perform western blot because that's what it's for right i won't go into detail on the nature and the the principles of western blot that you could um, learn on your own i'm just gonna teach you the physical way and the physical setup of your lab experiment so you can carry it out so i hope this helps any um inaccuracies that i talk about please leave a comment so you can um so i can fix it and uh, let's get to it right <clears throat> so the first thing is obtaining a protein lysate this is basically your your protein sample that you're gonna that you're gonna collect right so the first thing you want to do beforehand is you want to prepare boiling water or more specifically uh 95 degrees right 95 degree uh water and uh, also, it would be good if you have a four degree uh, centrifuge or a cooler centrifuge. Um, you also want to prepare that beforehand, right? Start getting the centrifuge uh, at four degrees uh, beforehand, right? Yeah, setting this up maybe like 15 minutes should be sufficient, right? And what you want to do is prepare a lysis buffer, a positive lysis buffer, and a 2x sample buffer. Now, you guys should be familiar with these two uh, buffers. Uh, but if not, I have in this document uh, how to prepare these, um, these solutions, right? Everything is in the bottom where in the required solutions. So your lysis buffer that you should have already in stock. Um, you know, you're going to use this many times during this Western blot protocol, but if you don't have the recipe, here's the recipe that I use with 100% um, efficiency, it worked. Um, and here's the recipe for it, right? You can pause the video so you can write it down. And this um, recipe is for a 250 volume uh, uh, lysis buffer negative. Right, a 250 lysis buffer and um, you, different 
um, protocols require different concentrations. This recipe is to have a final concentration for each of these um, uh, chemicals, right? To have a uh, these desired final concentrations. Like Tris will have um, a 25 millimolar, uh, sodium chloride will have 150 millimolar, EDTA, uh, two sodium will have one millimolar, right? So you wanna you wanna uh, mix all these. Um, all these masses together in a 250 uh, milliliter bottle, right? And uh, you want to, after you put all these uh, powders together, you want to fill up with uh, double distilled water, 200 mill uh, milliliters, and adjust the pH to 7.5 using hydrochloric um, acid chilled, right? Cooled hydrochloric acid. After they've been dissolved and the pH has been um, regulated, you're going to put EGPOL, CA630, um, and S, uh, sodium deoxycholate, 2.5 grams, sorry, uh, EGPOL, uh, 2.5 milliliters, and SDS, 0 0.25 grams, right? And this will give a final concentration of 0, uh, sorry, of 1%, 1% and 0.1%. And of course, fill again the remaining with uh, double distilled water up to 250 ml and store at four degrees Celsius. This is called your lysis negative buffer, right? Or your lysis buffer negative. What does it mean to be positive? It's basically when you use the the your lysis negative buffer, but you have you use or you add the proteinase inhibitor cocktail, right? Some suppliers. Oh, excuse me. Some suppliers don't add this cocktail uh, naming on it, but you're always going to have it as 1%, right? Now, the value is going to um, change depending how much volume, how much protein uh, sample you've made, but it's always to a, um, a one in 10 ratio, right? A 1% of the proteinase cocktail. The second lysis buffer you're going to use for this first part is the uh, 10x sample buffer. All right. And this 10x sample buffer is made up of 0 0.5 molar tris hydrochloric acid. Uh, you want to have that as, at a 6.8 pH, and you can store in the refrigerator, it's best. And 10% um, of weight to volume ratio of SDS uh, glycerol and a 0 0.5 weight to volume. Uh, bromothymol blue, which also is uh, usually stored in the fridge, and ultimately with milliQ, right? And you have these recipe volumes here. Uh, I apologize, there's no uh, final concentrations there. Um, okay, so uh, 2 ml, you know, uh, of tris hydrochloric acids, 4 ml of SDS, 2 ml of glycerol, bromothymol blue is 0 0.2, and milliQ is 0 0.8. This will give you a total of 9 milliliters. This should definitely be sufficient for your experiments, right? And um, this sample buffer, you whenever you do a Western blot, you're going to add a kind of reducing agent or, um, for example, uh, beta mercaptal ethanol is a commonly used one, okay? Um, yeah, all right, so these are the first uh, buffers you will use for the, for the part one, okay? So let's go back to the actual uh, experiment there. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is harvest your tissue. Now, um, different experiments require different kinds of tissues, of course. Uh, in my experiments, I, since I studied re uh, tissue regeneration, I'm harvesting small amounts of tissue from organisms. I used, in my case, I used a salamander for salamander regeneration, but some of you might be using cell cultures where you have directly the cells. Um, so of course the, the, the tissue will vary with your experiment, right? But ultimately what you wanna do is place, you know, uh, your tissue sample inside a 1.5 milliliter tube and you can store this temporarily in 1X PBS, right? But if your tissue is small and it's, and it's easy to handle, you could pour it directly into your lysis buffer positive, right? Basically, the lysis buffer having the um, the cocktail, the proteinase cocktail. Now, how much you're going to place will vary, but usually, in my experiments, I would put 35 microliters of lysis buffer positive, right, and add my sample to that. 
so just a little depiction here all right so you have your uh your 1.5 milliliter tube right and you have your little sample imagine this is a limb right that i've cut off and i've extracted this little piece here you add your piece your your tissue sample and then you fill in with 35 microliters of uh lysis buffer positive okay 35 microliters that's pretty much it now afterwards you're gonna want to um quickly snap freeze with uh, liquid nitrogen and you would want to do this quickly immediately with liquid nitrogen um it took me a while to use liquid nitrogen i was very hesitant to use it because i didn't know how to but um it's fairly easy guys so in any kind of styrofoam little box that you that your uh, chemicals come in that you order you know uh, I use a styrofoam box of maybe um, you know 20 centimeters by 15 centimeters and uh, basically what you do is that you can add chilled ice uh, sorry crushed ice right just add a crushed ice on uh sorry crushed ice on your on this little box here and put your sample in the middle right and uh, depending on the container that you use uh my lab had those old style nitrogen liquid nitrogen tank containers right they look exactly like this right uh, the thin funnel with um uh with a hollow base right and just pour it directly right just pour the liquid nitrogen directly on your sample and it'll basically snap freeze right always of course exercise caution use your gloves use your uh, goggles when you're doing performing these experiments and um, fill it up with liquid nitrogen and it'll it'll snap freeze immediately all right and once it snap freezes you can just uh, stop all right, and then what you want to do with your frozen sample is that you want to sonicate. All right, you want to sonicate your frozen sample for usually it's five minutes, right? But it could vary depending on how strong your sample is. Um, and uh, you want to repeat this step twice. Now, if you don't know how to sonicate, right, um, all of you should have a similar kind of presentation of your sonicators sonicators are usually a box and they're filled with they're filled with water right so you add your your sonicator uh i think at default i don't remember but uh, uh you put it for five minutes and you just hold your your sample in the water now what i've done is that i add ice you know uh, um i uh, I add, you know, balls of crushed ice. I, I compact it together and put it at the extremes to avoid getting the temperature so high, so as it won't, so as to it won't melt your sample inside the the. It won't thaw your sorry. It won't thaw your sample so quickly, so the sonication would be more effective, right? So you wait five minutes and then you want to spin down, right? Afterwards, you spin down. And you repeat again. <clears throat> you repeat again, uh, starting from the snap freeze. So you add a little bit more uh, liquid nitrogen, and then you sonicate again. So your sample should now be relatively um, uh, kind of a little gelatinous, uh, depending how well it broke down your it lies to your your cells. Um, and then after that, you want to centrifuge your samples at 12,000 RPM for 10 minutes at four degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, during that waiting time of the 10 minutes, you can prepare your 10x sample buffer containing beta mercaptal ethanol in a nine to one ratio. All right. Now, the amount needed depends the amount you're going to make of beta of a 2x sample buffer will depend ultimately on the sample that you are collecting right your protein sample so let's say you use 35 microliters of 
uh, of lysis buffer that contains your sample, right? So what was that final volume with your your cells, uh, your cell tissue plus the lysis buffer? Um, I was usually getting with my samples around 55 uh, um, volume, right? 55 microliters of volume. <clears throat> so, you know, since I had two samples, I would prepare all around 100, right? Um, 2x sample buffer. But um, per sample, 55 microliters should be accurate, accurate, right? So once you're done spinning down, you know, you want to collect the supernatant. You want to collect the supernatant of your spin down uh, uh, sample and place into a new 1.5 milliliter tube and let it reach room temperature. Now, here's where I'm mentioning specifically about the same volume. So let's say your supernatant. Um, oops. Let's say that the, the, your sample that you collected after the centrifuge Right, ended up being 50 microliters of your protein, right, of your protein sample. So you're also going to add 50 microliters of your 2x buffer. Okay, you're going to add it and then you're going to pipette um, softly, right? You don't want to, you don't need to do some vigorous uh, pipetting. Uh, pipette softly until it's uniform. And um, after you finish pipetting, <clears throat> you want to heat this sample up to 95 degrees for five minutes, right? In boiling water. In boiling water. And uh, uh, I usually use a foam floater, right? And um, you place it on the hot beaker. So, you know, you have your beaker here, you have the hot water, and then your floaters or basically any kind of styrofoam uh, that floats nicely and it's not so big. You can put your your sample on these floaters and make sure, one thing you do wanna make sure is that the, the actual sample is sticking and touching the water, right? It's touching the water. So this would be 95 degrees Celsius uh, for five minutes, okay? 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes and then uh, after that, you can spin down, right? And here you can pause your experiment. You can store your protein sample, your protein lysate at 20 degrees or uh, at 80 degrees if you wanna leave for months. But um, I always encourage my lab mates and my students to quickly use your samples, right? Quickly use your samples, especially if you're using RNA samples you want to use them immediately. But since we're using protein, proteins are more stable, so it should be all right, okay? So this is a simple way to collect your lysate, your protein lysate, no matter what cell type you have, no matter where it is coming from, uh, this should be a simple way to collect it, okay? Thank you guys, any questions, please, uh, please leave it in the comments below and I will see you in part two of the Western blot in detailed protocol. Thank you very much.